Hello Minions, Wheezy here again. Today we're going to talk about the best ways to rank up in Call of Duty Cold War by playing zombies. Let's go eat some brains. All right, so we are gonna be focusing most of this video on Outbreak. I'm gonna be giving you kind of a breakdown of the different objectives, as well as some side missions you can do, ways to hopefully rank up more quickly than that. Um, but I'm also going to briefly here at the beginning address uh, the two other core zombie modes and just give a little bit of a breakdown on how they compare in terms of overall fun and playability in my opinion as well as how they compare as far as the amount of xp you'll earn so again the way that i introduce this video is this is in my opinion the best way to rank up using zombies not necessarily the absolute most efficient so first let's talk about firebase z this is what you would probably consider the more traditional call of duty zombies mode in that you've got an area that you're defending from zombies for waves and waves um there obviously are some variations. There's a teleporter in Firebase Z where you can transport to another area. But it's the same basic concept as zombies in previous games where you try to survive for as long as you can from waves of zombies and they get more and more difficult until eventually you die. Um, you can set a cap on 20 rounds or you can just go as long as possible. Um, but even though this was a mode that I really enjoyed in the past, it didn't really capture my attention in this game, and especially compared to uh, the survival mode, it just didn't quite do as much. Here you can see, played one round, about 700 score per minute. It, it's really not a bad score per minute because of how many zombies you kill, uh, but overall enjoyment, less so. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that over Outbreak. This is Onslaught mode, which is only two players. Um, the uh, wave-based mode goes up to four, uh, but this basically has it where you're fighting off kind of similarly waves of enemies, but you're following this orb around, and every time the orb power charges up, you move to a different area of the map, and you have to follow the orb because being outside of the orb circle will kill you. Um, so it kind of makes an interesting, like, located, like, zombies horde mode. Um, but fundamentally, it's still kind of the same concept. I actually enjoyed this significantly more than Firebase Z, um, and I felt like even though I didn't know who I was playing with, it was just a random. Um, you kind of got more of a feeling of it being kind of like a brotherhood. You go through this like slaughter together. It's just the two of you. Um, so it was really kind of a, a much more fun experience for me. Um, but spoiler alert, uh, as it turned out, the XP, the score per minute, just was surprisingly low for the amount of killing that you do uh, in, the, in the amount of time that the game mode lasts. So even though I enjoyed this mode, and I would probably play it more, um, I really can't, can't recommend it as far as ranking up. And again, I didn't quite enjoy it as much as the the outbreak mode so um so yeah you're defeating elites just kind of wave based again you know 12 surges there well when we get to the score here you'll see it's just this was probably the same 20 25 minute game depending on how those some of these last 20 30 minutes uh outbreak can last a bit longer but 300 score per minute like it just it wasn't what I expected for as much fun as it was and as much as it felt like I was constantly shooting things. just didn't quite pan out as far as score per minute. So let's return back to Outbreak. And this is just classic Call of Duty Zombies fun, but spread out over the Dirty Bomb maps. And uh, in this first clip here, I'm just kind of showing off that so far, I haven't necessarily tried every single weapon so far in Zombies, but of the ones that I've tried, this pump action shotgun is my favorite just because of the devastating amount of damage it does up close, which in zombies, you're going to be up close. Um, this one is the level one pack-a-punch version, which is great because it does extra damage and it reloads four shells at once, has faster fire rate. Um, it's just it's just all of the things the base weapon does, but better. Um, so I really enjoy this shotgun probably more than any other weapon I've used so far. And... Uh, yeah, I just wanted to put a clip in there of that. But talking about it as a whole, let's go ahead and get into 
uh, some of the objectives that you will go through in Outbreak. So the first objective I'm going to talk about is the retrieve objective. And in this objective, you activate the uh, mission at a truck. Well, it's a rocket on the back of a truck. And what it does is it activates two uh, different locations where you have to go and pick up the ether material and return it back to the truck within the five minute time limit. Um, this can be most easily done if you have a vehicle. You can also do it on foot, although when you have the uh, objective, the object in your hand, you move significantly slower. So running back <laughs> with that is possible. Uh, I did it the first time I played this objective, but I recommend you use a vehicle if possible because you can, you can get back in vehicles when you have it. So, um, so once you've returned those two uh, objectives to there. Uh, the rocket launches up into the sky and the uh, objective is complete and you can move on to the anomaly and the next area. Although we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail after I cover all of the objective types. All right, the next objective we're gonna talk about is the HVT objective or high value target. And what that does is it spawns in an elite, essentially, uh, a big health bar bad guy that you have to kill. Uh, seems pretty straightforward, um, but as you take a about a third of his life, he teleports, flies through the sky to a second position. Uh, when you get to that location, take another third of his health, he flies to a third and final location. And at that point, depending on which elite it is, he will either split into two more elites that you then have to kill, uh, which are a little bit easier, or in the case of the dude with the rocket arm, when you kill him the third time, he just dies. So, um, overall, this is not super challenging. It's, it's a fun one, and from what I've seen so far, it's the most common one I've encountered, uh, although I get the impression that these are pretty well randomized. And next up, we have the escort objective, which is where you follow a rover around the map as it goes to different warp anomaly points with a monkey in the backseat that procedurally trans, uh, transmorgifies it, gets trans... What the fuck word am I looking for? It transforms. Jesus, it transforms into various things like snowmen and random shit. Uh, and you essentially defend the rover as it moves from point to point until it finally reaches the final point. Um, meanwhile, from each point you get waves of zombies, etc, etc. And uh, once it reaches the final point and teleports itself into another dimension, uh, then you have completed the objective. So this one is probably the easiest one uh, of all of them. It's at least straightforward and the, the waves are spread out far enough because the rover is traveling that it's uh, really not super difficult uh, but uh, yeah this is another another common one in my experience and uh, yeah that uh, once you've transported the rover then you can move on to the next area okay we only have two more that I'm going to talk about that I've run into so far I'm not sure if there's more um, but as you can tell Outbreak has a variety of objectives that are kind of randomly chosen uh, per area so there's quite quite a lot of variety here it's not gonna feel too crazy routine uh, that quickly um, the next one is the holdout objective and this one's actually really interesting because it teleports you to a new area that's a small room much like the kind of like Firebase Z the more classic zombies mode so this objective will actually basically transport you into classic zombies defense where you're boarding up windows and defending zombies coming into a small area and you have to survive in this area for a set amount of time before it returns you back to the overworld and you can move on to the next one but this one is is interesting when it comes up because it's uh it's like a, a brief little break from this wide open world of uh of outbreak and uh, a brief glimpse back into classic zombies and the last objective that we're going to discuss is the defend objective and this one is just as advertised there is a object that you have to defend like a, a research console that's got a satellite uplink or whatever to transmit data back and you basically just stop zombies from punching it <laughs> and defend the area so for a set amount of time you have to just 
kill waves of zombies and not let them punch the machine to death. Um, very straightforward. Not as interesting as some of the other ones, uh, but again, yeah, a decent variety of objectives in this game. So, um, so the defend objective uh, just you know gives you gives you something new to try from the other ones. But uh, overall, the objectives are the primary way that you will uh, advance in Outbreak. And what I mean by that is if you look in the top right corner, you've got the level, essentially, that you're at, the number of times that you've, well, it's not the number of times you've warped, it's one less than the number, or it's one more than the number of times you've warped, you start out at one. Anyway, <laughs> what, what you'll do is after you've completed the objective for an area, you will get access to an anomaly, which when you activate will turn into a beacon, and from that beacon, um, you can, it, it activates a perk machine, it activates a pack-a-punch machine, you can buy armor, you can do crafting. Um, so it gives you an opportunity before you teleport to the next area to buy uh, and craft some upgrades to prepare you for the next level. Uh, but then you can either from the beacon choose to try and exfil uh, and exit zombies or you can continue to the next world where it will go up a level the zombies will be significantly harder, and you will get new objectives to try and complete in that harder world. So now let's discuss what you want to do and the best tactic for ranking up, and I think in general, having fun getting through Outbreak in a way that minimizes kind of fiddling around. Um, in each map, uh, and I'll show you uh, some diagrams here, there are some randomly placed ob optional objectives that you can complete and these will give you uh, extra money that you can use towards buying upgrades and ranking up weapons, pack-a-punch, stuff like that. Which for longer runs is going to be something that you absolutely need. Though zombies get significantly harder at level 2 than they are in level 1 and even more so at level 3. So let's talk about what I think your strategy for Outbreak ought to be, at least the way things are right now. Um, from my experience and the way that the difficulty scales, if you're just matchmaking with randoms and you're not running with an organized squad where you want to go as far as you possibly can, what you ought to do is when you join into the game in the first level, open your map, find how many objectives you have, optional objectives you have on the map, if you need to communicate this to your team, uh, that would be helpful. You can get in voice chat and say, hey, let's go check out this objective. Or you can ping it on your, on your by looking at it, ping it on your radar. Um, and try and get people to help you with the optional objectives because this will give you more points. It will give you extra money to help get upgrades. And, and after you've completed the optional objectives, then I would move straight towards doing the main objective for that area. And the reason... Uh, I recommend doing that instead of kind of wandering the map in a more like exploratory way. Like I said, unless you're doing this with people that you know and you're having fun doing that. Um, as far as getting the most out of the experience, having the most fun, uh, you basically want to be moving from objective to objective. Now what you could do is go immediately to the main objective and then you would just basically complete that and then you can at that point go back to the side objectives before using the beacon. So from that standpoint that order doesn't really matter but especially if you're playing with randoms if you activate the beacon first there's a good chance that one of your teammates is going to warp you to the next area or try to exfil before you get the chance to do those side objectives. So I'd recommend trying to do those first. Uh, and then complete the main objective before moving on to the next area. Now you have the option after completing the first objective to simply exfil immediately. Um, and the first couple times I played I did this, uh, especially depending on how long it takes you to do that after 10-15 minutes of the first area maybe you want to leave. Um, but if you hurry through the objectives I think it's, it's pretty simple to get to the second area not too bad uh, so I would recommend uh, getting to the beacon and initiating a warp to head to the second area first uh, and then that way you have another uh, set of side objectives you complete another main objective you can complete which is fun you get extra points and then I would recommend after the second world after you complete the main objective in the second area then I would recommend an exfil and here's why because uh, primarily the 
when you're playing with randoms, when you get to the third area, it's going to be significantly more difficult. And the rate at which the game drops you money, you essentially need at least one weapon pack-a-punched for the level that you're at. Uh, preferably two, otherwise you're really kind of tied to the one weapon you have. But when you're in area one, the default weapons are fine. When you move on to area two, you really need to have a pack-a-punched weapon to be effective, and it costs $5,000 to pack-a-punch a weapon. That's the first level. There are three levels of pack-a-punch. I have not been to the third yet. Um, but the second level of pack-a-punch requires $15,000. So that is significantly more, and this game really doesn't throw much money at you. So if you guys happen to know a way to get more money than by simply completing the side objectives and completing the primary objectives. There's not really a whole lot of other money just lying around unless you want to just grind zombies for a ridiculous amount of time. And keep in mind that perks also cost money if you don't find them randomly around the map, right? And they cost, I think, about $2,500 each. So if you want a perk and a pack-a-punched weapon, that's going to cost you $7,500. If you want two pack-a-punched weapons, that's going to be ten grand right there. So you're, you're going to find that after your first level, yes, you can pack-a-punch one or both of your weapons pretty easily. But it's going to be significantly less easy, especially after you spent that money, in the second round to earn another fifteen plus thousand dollars on top of that. So sometimes you might get into the third level, which you can handle like the early kind of objectives and some of the, the general zombies with a level one pack-a-punched weapon, uh, but it's harder and chews up a lot more ammo and it's significantly less fun. Um, and then when you get enough money, you can go and upgrade to a level two pack-a-punched weapon, in which case you're kind of back to uh, normal on the overall difficulty for killing zombies. Now, again, the caveat on this is if you're playing with a group of four with and you really just want to get an organized squad and you want to go as far as you can as many levels into the game as you possibly can then you can kind of disregard this right and and try and maximize your money try and get your upgrades stick together really grind things out um, you'll tend to find that when you're matchmaking with randoms you guys will consolidate around objectives but other than that people will just kind of wander around the map and explore a little bit and in that case being by yourself in a level three world with a with a weapon that's only been packed punched once, you will find it very dangerous. Um, so my suggestion would be, be you know, do the side missions in the first area, complete the first objective, pack a punch one or both of your weapons, move on to the second area, complete the side objectives, complete the main objective. This will this will be a lot of fun. You'll get a lot of points. You'll you'll probably at this point be spending between 30 to 45 minutes in the game, depending on how quickly you push through it. Um, it could be as fast as 20-25 minutes if you just really knock it out. But then you'll be 30-45 minutes in, and then if you exfil after the second objective, the exfil is doable, and then you get the Ethereum bonuses for upgrading your perks and skills and stuff like that. So in my experience, and in my opinion where I'm at right now, that seems to be the best balance for outbreak zombies and it results in a very respectable score per minute helps you rank up uh, the battle pass helps you rank up your weapons helps you rank up your overall xp uh, it's just a really fun less frustrating way to to rank up in the game while enjoying some awesome zombie slaughtering action um, so that said the other caveat and the other reason i would suggest perhaps not trying to push on to level three is with this being cold war and it's still being pretty buggy and a little bit broken the longer you push on in this game the more likely you are to run into a significant technical issue so for instance the one time well i guess i've done it a couple times but one of the main times i actually got one of my weapons ranked up to pack a punch level two when uh, we were in the third level and I had a good weapon and it felt like, okay, we might be able to push on the next one. I got a connection interrupted and I got dumped from the game. So I did, as far as I can tell, I kept, you know, kept all the weapon ranks, the uh, upgrades and stuff, the XP that I had earned during the match. 
Um, if there's an XP bonus at the end of the match, I obviously didn't get that. As well as for a successful exfil, I did not get the Ethereum bonuses for that either. So there's a risk the longer you keep in the game of the game just dropping out, your teammates dropping out, uh, or just something bad happening. So real briefly, I'll just talk about exfil. The way that exfil works is when you activate it at the beacon, you need to get to the exfil site as quickly as possible. It's close enough that you can run there. Uh, I would suggest taking a vehicle just to make it easier. Uh, and then once you get to the exfil site, you have to clear all the zombies, which usually includes a few elites, uh, especially at level two. Um, you have to clear all of them within the time window that you're given, which is I think two or three minutes. It's a short exfil window, um, but very doable if you, if you hurry up and get there. Don't worry about the waves of zombies that come after you. Don't stop to shoot them. Just run straight to the exfil site. And uh, and once you get there, then clear out the zombies that are on the site. You'll see a counter on the screen that counts down to zero. Um, so make sure you kill all of those zombies before the timer gets to zero. Uh, and you will successfully exfil from the area. Um, once you've done that, you get uh, a bonus like uh, the Ethereum ones. You get like the normal one and then a bonus like concentrated one that you can use for upgrades and stuff like that. So there is an advantage to doing the exfil as opposed to just trying to warp to the next level and then everyone just dying, in which case you don't get that bonus. So it can be, uh, again, it's, it's just a definitely right now, my suggestion to you, get to world two, complete that objective, get the exfil and then rinse and repeat if you want to play some more. But again, at 30, 45 minutes, it's a decent length for a round of zombies and uh, kind of lets you move on with your day. So overall, I really love the outbreak mode and it's a lot of fun. You can queue up with randoms easily and it doesn't feel like they're going to be, you know, weighing you down too much. And uh, it's just a, a really good time and, and it's a good way to rank up uh, as you go. So um, hopefully you guys found that uh, helpful and useful. If you guys are playing zombies, uh, give me your, you know, tell me where I was wrong. Tell me what your tips are. Tell me what you would do differently. Uh, you know, and, and tell me if you want to see more stuff like this. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this, if you're going to try out zombies or try some of these these suggestions, uh, leave a like. If you thought this was awful, worst advice you've ever received in your life, would not, <laughs> would not watch again. You suck at zombies, bro. Uh, you can leave a dislike. It's It'll hurt my feelings a little bit, but I'm tough. Uh, and if you're not a minion, please subscribe. I do fun, awesome zombie type stuff and multiplayer stuff. Just, just, it's good. To, just trust me. Trust me. You want to subscribe. Okay. Then. I will talk to you later. Goodbye.